Hi. First up, I want to say thanks so much for clicking on this video. It means the world to me. Secondly, I want to say welcome to the first of my eShop list videos of 2019. This video is number I don't know how many in a series of videos where if you're new around here, I pluck 10 games from the eShop that I feel are really fun, engaging, exciting, addicting, a bunch of other adjectives. Are those adjectives? I should have finished high school. Just great games on the eShop that maybe you should check out if you like the look of them. The premise is pretty simple. I don't know why I'm bothering to explain it. And I picked some really awesome games today and I have a lot to say about all of them. So how about I just Shut up. If you're new around here, please smash that subscribe button and make sure you heft a lip all over the like button while you're heading down that way anyway. Without further ado, let's talk about some really fun eShop games. And the first eShop batter stepping up to today's plate that is my video is <laughs> Downwell. Am I pointing to it? Yeah, there it is, down well. By far one of the cheapest games on any of my eShop lists at just $2.99, down well is absolutely worth the price and then some. The entire game has you falling down a, well, a, a well, but you're falling in style. Just like Bayonetta, you have gun boots that pack a huge punch that keep you afloat for just a moment while you blast away at any enemies or bricks directly below you. Downwell is so simple in design, from its 8-bit visuals to its gameplay mechanics, but its fast-paced action is hard to put down, making it a perfect pick up and play a few rounds kind of game, which is exactly what you want on the Switch. The further down into the dark well you fall, the harder and weirder the enemies become. In classic Mario style, you're able to head stomp on most of the enemies, which gives you a satisfying amount of recovery time which you can use to plan your next move, but not all enemies will appreciate being stepped on. And with only four hit points, you don't want to make any mistakes. You fall at such insane speeds, you only have a split second moment to decide if you should squash, dodge, or shoot your way through the next obstacle. You will find more than you expect in the well, from shops where you can buy helpful items or hidden caves filled with relics. And after every stage, you get to pick a power up, or if you're lucky, get some health back since your hit points carry over level to level. This game is not easy. It took me more attempts than I would like to admit just to get to the fourth level. So bring your A game or prepare to go down. Get it? Like down, like down well, like because you're falling down the, the, the well. The game's just a few dollars. Try it out. <laughs> While Goat Simulator might be the most expensive game on this list, sitting at $29.99, which really 30 bucks ain't that bad, it's also the game that'll bring you the most unadulterated joy. The concept is incredible. So you have all these simulator games, right? Like Farming Simulator, Bus Simulator, you know the types. They're supposed to make you feel like you're working a 9 to 5 on a tractor all day. Super serious stuff. Well, someone had the amazing idea. What if you are a goat and just like nothing made sense. <laughs> in Goat Simulator, you control a goat and your only objective is to have fun. Run, jump, bash things, lick stuff. Goat Simulator is all about causing as much destruction as you possibly can as a goat. I can't stress that enough. <laughs> it's been compared to the old school Tony Hawk games, except instead of being a skater, you're a goat, and instead of doing tricks, you wreck stuff. Licking objects attaches your tongue to it, and you can literally drag anything around for as long as you want until you're done with it. And at any time, you can just drop your goat into ragdoll mode, which is when you start to experience the most fun you can have with the game's insane physics engine. And the entire game is filled with bugs and glitches, and that's half the fun. In fact, the developers have promised not to fix any of the bugs and glitches because they find them so hilarious. Well, except any of the bad bugs that, you know, your game crashing and stuff like that. They'll fix that, but you, you know, the fun ones. So you might find yourself bugging out into the floors or walls amongst all the chaos you're creating. The game is literally a parody on the simulator franchise and it's one big meme in on itself. This Switch pack also includes Goat MMO Simulator, Goat Z or Goat Z, which is a zombie day Z parody, Goat Simulator Payday, and Goat Simulator Waste of Space. These are all fleshed out DLC versions of the base game. For example, the Goat Z pack even features crafting and of course zombies. So go get your goat on and start tweeting me all the bugs and glitches you find. Next we have Momodora and hey look at us, we almost made it through an entire eShop video without a Metroidvania game in it. And don't take me the wrong way, I love a good MVG as much as the next human being, it's just these lists are usually 
filled with them. Today though, we just have the one, which gives it a perfect chance to stand out from the crowd. Momodora easily boasts one of the most impressive pixel art styles I have seen. The characters and just the entire world is filled with life. And the art direction is very Castlevania inspired. The game also has extremely tight controls and combat similar to Dead Cells, but it feels heavier, like my attacks have more weight behind them, and I do like that. This game offers everything you would expect from your classic Metroidvanias. Hidden items and power-ups, loads of enemy types, cool boss battles, great music, a small amount of backtracking, and you know, the usual stuff. Oh, and you know what? This is actually the fourth game in a series. Yeah, I know. How did we miss all of these? Thankfully, this one is a prequel, so it's a fantastic place to start your Momodora journey. Yeah, I gotta be honest though, I do totally feel like this game deserves a spot on this list. It's absolutely worth its price. However, it's not the best Metroidvania style game I have played. Momodora didn't really do anything to transcend the genre or do anything really that different at all. And the entire game is played with borders, and I mean, just come on man, it's 2019. Again, it's absolutely worth the price, especially if you're looking for your next hit of Metroidvania goodness, just bear in mind those other things I said. Wait, 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 wait a second. Didn't Enter the Breach launch in August of last year? Did I really forget to talk about it? Yes, I know I did because every video I have made since then, y'all have let me know that I have not talked about Enter the Breach yet. Sheesh! Although if I'm being honest for a second, I really appreciate the fact that when I miss a game that you really want me to talk about, you let me know it repeatedly. That actually means the world to me. So let's talk about Enter the Breach. I played it just for you guys. Enter the Breach is a turn-based strategy game set in the far future where humanity fights against giant armies of monsters. You control soldiers that operate these giant mechs that can be equipped with a bunch of different weapons and armor. And you play on these floating grid-filled squares, eradicating the monsters and trying to save the buildings filled with civilians. And this is where things get real because Enter the Breach can be brutal. You'll have to to constantly adapt to ever-changing scenarios, forever having to find new ways to survive the horror. As frustrating as it is to have new enemies spawn out of nowhere without you expecting it, it forces you to stay on your toes and expect the unexpected. Even slight screw-ups or misclicks can cost you the game, even if you're doing well. In some of the later missions, most of your gameplay time will probably be you just wondering what the heck is the best move to make next. The game isn't about flat Fleshy, colorful visuals or an in-depth fleshed out story, it's all about the tactics. For hardcore fans of the genre, this game is a must because it's one of the best in the genre. Did someone say flashy, colorful visuals? Oh yeah, that was me. That was me that said that. Ah, I remember. Another game I missed out on until now is Guacamelee 2. It's a Metroidvania that- Damn it. <laughs> so close. I guess there's two on this list. Honestly though, this game doesn't really feel like an MVG to me. It's more like a brilliant platformer with excellent level design. And it's just bursting with color. I mean, literally, I'm pretty sure they used every color there is in existence. Blues, reds, indigos, violets, the rest of the colors, I'm not naming them all. This game is filled to the brim with sharp wit, buttloads of charm, and just the right quirky sense of humor that I love. I mean, just look at this goat telling me that I'm in the darkest timeline. That right there, that's a game I want to buy twice. <laughs> Guys, I've been thinking about that night over and over. One thing has become clear. This is the darkest, most terrible timeline. You play as Juan, having to travel timelines to save the world, and it's all up to him, because out of all the other timelines, he is the last... Juan... Alive. I love this game. <laughs> As you platform, you switch between the worlds of the living and the dead, and in doing so, certain objects or platforms will appear and disappear. This leads to gameplay that has you having to think fast and adapt to your situations quickly, or else you might find yourself dying in the wrong world. You also have the ability to turn into a chicken. <laughs> you can not only use this to access areas you couldn't before, but you can also use different attacks and abilities in the chicken form. The combat is really fleshed out, with loads of different fighting abilities, as well as an upgrade system. And if you think just the single player is fun, it's an entirely different feeling game when you play with friends, especially for players. If you're not out there playing and enjoying this game right now, let me tell you, you're the only one. Is it still okay when I make the joke? I hope so. 
For the first time ever in my eShop videos, I'm kind of cheating on these next two. I mean, I guess I'm cheating. I, they're, my, they're my videos, right? Can I cheat on my own videos? It should be my rules. Am I breaking my own rules? What a conundrum. Let me explain what I mean. <laughs> okay, so I usually don't add games to these lists that I've already talked about before and reviewed somewhere else. But recently I worked on a really great video with my friend Bob Wolf over from his channel Wolf Den, and I decided to check out both Donut County and Gunman Cly for that video, and I fell in love with both of those games. And I felt like, in a weird way, I owed it to those games to have them featured in an eShop video, because as far as me reviewing eShop games go, I kind of see this series that that I make on the eShop lists kind of canon to the eShop games I reviewed. Does that make sense? And I don't want these two games to be excluded from my eShop games worth buying. If you want to see me review those games, you will have to go and watch that other video, which you can see by clicking up here somewhere or clicking at the end of the video or checking the description down below. There's so many ways. You can just Google it. I don't care. If you're just really freaking lazy and you don't want to do me a solid by watching that video, though, let me summarize these two games. Donut County is like a reverse Katamari style game where you suck things into a hole rather than roll them up into a big ball like you would in Katamari. And Gunman Clive is the best Mega Man style game that you never played. They are both super cheap and super fun and if you need more convincing watch that other video oh holy moly i am so glad firewatch came to switch this is a game i fell in love with on my xbox quite a while ago and now you guys can finally check it out for the first time if you also didn't play it elsewhere before now and I, I just, I recommend this one so much. It might be my second favorite on the list. Firewatch is a game that you will either absolutely love or you just might not. It depends on how you feel about walking sim kind of games, like the Telltale's Walking Dead. In other words, if you love fantastically written story-driven games with beyond brilliant voice acting and a roller coaster of emotions just waiting for you to jump on and start going through the loop-de-loops, then you're in for a treat. But if you're the kind of person that looks at a game Game like The Walking Dead and thinks, I don't like quick time events and there's not enough shooty shooty bang bang. This might not be your game. Firewatch puts you in control of a man named Henry, who has found himself in a very difficult place in life. So he decides to escape to a job in the middle of nowhere, specifically the middle of a national forest in Wyoming in the year 1989. I mean, this place is so far in the middle of nowhere, it takes him two full days just to hike to his tower where he will be living and working throughout the rest of his career as a fire lookout. And it's the story that's told from this point on that's just something truly special. Henry is almost all alone out here other than a new friend he found in a fellow fire lookout named Delilah. And while throughout the game you can see Delilah's lookout tower in the distance, your only contact with her is through walkie-talkies. And through these walkie-talkies is where the entirety of the story will unfold. And again, it's just brilliant. You talk to Delilah every day about work, life, your past, everything and anything you choose to open up about. Learning more about your own character as well as Delilah's. The dialogue here is captivating. At times it's laugh out loud funny with some of the wise cracks or jokes they'll tell each other uh there are uh panties there are what i don't want to say that word again why because you're 12. And at other times, it'll get so intense that you won't even want to pick a dialogue option. The voice acting is so real and believable at times that I honestly forgot I was playing a game and truly felt as though I was listening to real people talk and learning all about them. What happens to these characters as the story unfolds made me legitimately feel uneasy. As a mystery arises and you start to feel as though you are constantly being watched or followed by something or someone. I wish I could talk about this game more and dive into more of the details, but I feel anything other than what I've said would be a spoiler. So I guess I'll end up by saying the art direction here is incredible and since you're watching a video review I really don't think I have to elaborate on that any more than I just did. The next one is One Strike. When I started looking at the eShop's latest releases to make this video, I saw One Strike had released fairly recently. I grabbed it and enjoyed it and obviously decided to put it on this list. It wasn't until later that I found out that this wasn't actually the game's first time on the eShop. Apparently it was released back in October, but then it was swiftly pulled down for copyright infringement. The director of the game paid a composer for the music and both the developer and the publisher were convinced that the track was an original work. 
Turns out, though, that it wasn't. The track was stolen from a Famicom game. And now the game is back on the eShop with all new music, and I say we show the game some support because it had quite a big setback through all of this. And it's a fun game. Let me talk about it. For only $4.99, this is another cheapy cheap game worth the price. You have three difficulty settings, easy, medium, or hardcore, and trust me, you'll want to start on easy. As the name of the game would suggest, you get hit once, you die. You hit your opponent once, they die. So simple and yet so freaking intense. There is seven different fighters to choose from, each of which have different weapons and fighting styles. Believe it or not, with just having a forward dash, back dash, block, and one attack button, it still takes quite a while to master each fighting style of the characters. In one life mode, just like in real life, you only got one life, that is, if that wasn't clear. You can't get hit by any of these fighters, even once, and I'm telling you that's not easy, even on easy. There is also arcade and team duel mode, as well as tournament mode for up to 8 players, AI, or real people. Again, it's another game that's just so simple in design and gameplay, and yet as soon as you block that first attack and then land the killing strike, you'll watch your opponent fall and then realize, I just want to keep on killing. That was darker than I intended. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure like 95% of you have been waiting for this one ever since you clicked on the video. Let's talk about it. In just the first few days since Wargroove released, it's already solidified itself as one of the best digital games on the eShop. In fact, I'll be surprised if this doesn't make it into my top 10 eShop games of the year roundup later on this year. And if that's the case, hello future me and future you guys. How was the year? Did anything terrible happen? Am I dead? I could be dead. <laughs> I, I mean, I really could be. Let's not think about that. <clears throat> My own mortality aside, needless to say, I love it, and it's an absolute steal at $19.99. Wargroove is a turn-based tactics game, and for those of you that have been paying attention throughout this video, it's my personal favorite turn-based tactics game on this list. I, I apologize to the other one on this list. I just love this game. It's inspired by those old-school Advance War games that we all loved on the Game Boy Advance, and they did a fantastic job at bringing their vision to life with its high resolution pixel art and fantastic gameplay mechanics. Just like those Advance War games and similar to Fire Emblem, you control multiple units on the battlefield. Each turn you're able to move your characters once each, as well as attack or use their abilities once each per turn. There are loads of different unit types. Archers who can attack from a distance and can deal even more damage if they don't have to move that turn. Swordsmen, they need to attack up close but deal more damage if their commander is nearby. Even adorable pup pups who do more damage in packs and can be used for scouting ahead. <clears throat> but we uh we don't talk about what happens when they um when they uh, don't um <laughs> Come on man. They're not real. They're just digital fake pup pups. They're not real. <laughs> Anyway, there's a ton of other unit types on top of that. I've made my face red now by touching it a bunch. I wasn't really crying. Kind of was. As well as your commander in each level who also have their own special groove ability, which is a different ability for all 13 of the playable commanders. Some will be able to heal troops or raise their defenses and you know, stuff like that. Positioning and thinking three moves ahead of your enemy is everything in this game. However, there is so much more to think about on top of that, such as the effects certain terrains will have on your units, or which units are weak to others. The game can be a real challenge too, which is a great thing. The last thing you want in any strategy game is to not have to use any strategy. If it was super easy, it would be super boring. And just to add even more bang to your buck, Wargroove has local and online multiplayer including versus and cooperative play and there's also campaign editing tools which allows you to create your own maps. Its overall quality and polish is undeniable, from the visuals to the story and the gameplay. There is so much more I could gush over in this game, there's so much more I could talk about, but instead, I'm just gonna leave it on... Have fun. I'm assuming that you're gonna buy it, because it's, it's like a must. So by saying have fun, it's like, it was like a funny ha way of saying just why talk about it because I know you guys are gonna play subscribe please I'm losing my mind over here there's another 10 games on the eShop worth buying and honestly I feel like today's list was very solid I actually think we're on episode number 12 of these now so what like 120 of these eShop games I have a lot of fun playing them and reviewing them for you guys and I hope you like the videos and if you do make sure you have flip 
all over that subscribe button. Click the tap on this video right here because this time next year I might be dead.